Our video today is going to be about insect traps in general, how we're using them and why they're important. We're also going to have a couple guests from the CFIA talk a little bit about the Japanese beetle eradication program as well going on in Vancouver. The Invasive Species Council of BC is a registered charity and non-profit organization that aims to improve British Columbia's landscape by reducing the impact of invasive species. The Japanese beetle was first discovered in Davenland Park in Vancouver in 2017, and it's known to attack over 300 trees and shrubs which could seriously impact Vancouver landscapes and the agricultural and horticultural industries. Today, a group of 10 partners are working together to protect Vancouver and BC from the Japanese beetle. Insect traps are used for general surveys and information uh, regarding the diversity and distribution of insects in an area. So there are different kinds of insect traps. They can be used with or without a attractant. That could be a sex pheromone or a floral type of lure that would attract certain types of insects. They can come in different colors and different sizes and they sometimes also have acoustic features to them that help attract certain insects. So they can come in a various combination of color and size and in different areas of a landscape as well. Sometimes you can find them high up in a tree or you could see them somewhere in the bushes where an insect may be feeding on that type of plant. Traps are really good for detecting new invasions as well. For example, they're helping us find out where the Asian giant hornets are coming from. It'll also help us to understand how we can control and hopefully prevent the Asian giant hornet from establishing here. So now you're gonna hear from some plant health inspectors from the CFIA who we joined one day to check out how they look at traps on a day-to-day -day basis to monitor the Japanese beetle. Hello, my name is Olivia and I work for the Canadian Food Inspection Agency as an EG1. So what that means is that I'm on the ground checking these traps. You might have seen them and they are Japanese beetle traps. So we have them all over Vancouver, particularly here in the regulated area that you'll see lots. And the reason why we have these out is because Japanese beetle is a regulated pest. So it could be a big news for a lot of our industries, a lot of our major exports. Uh, these beetles will love to eat them, apples, legumes, berries. So it's really important that we uh, find out where they are and we're working towards eradication. So when we get to a trap, uh, it, has, it has a lure here. So it's safe for the public. It has two components. One is aromatic. I like to think it smells like a chai tea latte. Uh, so that's going to attract the beetle that there's fruits or, or something that it would like to eat here. There's another component which is a sex pheromone. So we can't actually uh, distinguish this, but the beetles can. So if the beetle's in the area, they're going to be attracted to this trap, but it's not going to bring them to the area if they're not already here. So if you see one of these traps in your neighborhood, it's to make sure that Japanese beetle isn't spreading across our province and that we're able to eradicate it here in the regulated area. CFIA plant health inspectors travel around the lower mainland checking Japanese beetle traps laid out from Hope to Whistler. When they approach a trap, they'll grab it from the top and give it a tap to listen for any critters inside. If there are insects heard, they will take extra care to remove the container from the trap. They'll take a look inside the container to see if there are any insects, and if not, they'll just tap the debris out that may have been left behind. A collection cup is used if there are any specimens found within the trap. They'll fill the cup with ethanol and transfer the beetles to the cup to swirl and disorient them within the ethanol, making it harder for them to fly away. These beetles are then transferred from the collection cup into the bison tube. The tube is marked on the outside and the inside with waterproof paper. It'll have a barcode of the trap, the date it was collected, the trapper that collected it, and a number of beetles found within the trap. After every trap check, these bison tubes are stored in their cooler bag and each trap will have a picture of the location the suspect beetles found, and the barcode of the trap sent to the supervisor to prepare for shipping. So at the end of the day, all the specimens are brought to the office, ready to ship to Ontario for identification. 
So the Japanese beetle was first detected in a trap back in 2017. And like Deanne mentioned, there's lots of traps out there that are just for general surveillance. And this is exactly what they're out there for. So a general trap detected some Japanese beetles. Having these traps out there before we even knew that they were there uh, help, helped us to create the eradication program much faster than if we didn't know they were, if they were there for several years. So in 2018, the CFIA placed many more traps in and around Vancouver as a response to the Japanese beetle. So right now, today, there's over 2,400 traps from North Vancouver to Hope. Most of them are in Vancouver, and then there's a lot more within David Lamb Park, which is where the Japanese beetle was first spotted. So here it is. This is a Japanese beetle-specific trap. The beetles go right in here into these tiny little holes. Since the Japanese beetle is most active from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., this is when it's, uh, there's the most direct sunlight, the traps are placed strategically so that at that time there's the most sun exposure, as well as away from the public, but still close to preferred plants. So you'll kind of see them in around uh, David Lamb Park. They'll kind of be tucked away sort of in these plants, and you'll see them above in the canopy as well, as you probably saw uh, Steph take one down with her pole. Uh, so these traps are checked every three weeks, and this is for data collection as well as just sort of quality assurance to make sure the traps aren't broken or dangerous to anybody, um, especially the traps in the canopy. You know, if they if this breaks or if, you know this starts to come loose and it falls, it could hit somebody. So if you do see any of these traps, this is a Japanese beetle trap monitored by the CFIA. Please do not touch them, they're for data collection. Without these traps, we wouldn't know how we're doing with the eradication program, so it's very, very important. And like I mentioned, um, if you do see a broken one or one sort of like dangling on the branch of a tree, please report it to the CFIA as well as report any sightings of the Japanese beetle to the CFIA's website. So, to catch up on the final results of the monitoring program and the eradication program, look at our final results from last year's eradication efforts at the end of this season. You can find this information on the CFIA's website, or you can find more information on the Japanese beetle at the ICBC website. For more information, take a look at our other videos about the Japanese beetle. And don't forget to check out our website to learn more about the Invasive Species Council and our volunteer opportunities, or to make a donation today to help us continue the fight against invasives.